why would anyone want to swim 2.4 miles and then bike ride 112 miles and then run a 26.2 mile marathon? Well, these are the distances for a full Ironman event, an event that I'm getting ready to run in just about nine months in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And today I want to talk a bit about the why, why I've decided to take on this challenging event, why I got into endurance sports in the first place, and the massive impact that it's had in my life. I never considered myself much of an athlete growing up, certainly not an endurance athlete. I was definitely never looking forward to the mile run in high school, that is for sure, and certainly not paying to run in high school. That being said, I did play sports throughout middle school and high school, but I never really applied myself. I was overweight, I didn't feel like I had any natural skill, I didn't apply myself, so that lack of application really showed on the field. and. Eventually, by senior year, I didn't play the sports anymore and I kind of put that all to the side. Fast forward to my mid-20s. I decided to join the military and this process certainly unlocked some things within me. Going through boot camp, the things that we had to do both physically and mentally, there was shifts that began to happen. There was doors within me that began to open and a new understanding of what I was capable of. I began to understand that there was this untapped potential within me that I could tap into by pushing myself more and more. And this was brought out through boot camp, through the things that we had to do in the military and overseas. And it really was this new journey, this new understanding of who I was, how I could show up. And in my time in the military, going through boot camp, I unlocked these doors and then eventually I found my way into the world of running. It happened while I was overseas in Japan. We were stationed out there for a while, and while there wasn't a ton else to do, I began to take up running, and I began to find a passion in it. I began to enjoy the process of it. And I'm the type of person, if I get into something, especially physically, I need a goal to move towards. I find it challenging to maintain consistency if I don't have a certain goal that I'm moving towards. So that's when I decided to sign up for my first marathon. I figured, hey, I'm doing all this running, I got into this, let's put a date on the calendar. Let's work towards something to keep that motivation up, to keep that discipline up. So that's what I did. And in 2013, I signed up for the Marine Corps Marathon, my first ever endurance event. And I'll be completely honest with you, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know about nutrition, nutritional planning, programming, the training plan. I just was putting in a bunch of miles, eating what I wanted to eat and hoping for the best really. I didn't know what I didn't know back then. And eventually I ran the marathon. It wasn't pretty. I did decent, I finished. All I wanted to do was finish and I finished. I was hurting. I was hurting for a while after the, that one, but I did finish. But knowing what I know now, there was a lot left on the table for that race. But again, it was my first race. It was a learning lesson. And that was in 2013. And I got out of the military 2015. After that race, I really kind of put the endurance work to the side and really didn't run much after that. I kind of achieved that goal and then that was it. Got out of the military in 2015. I opened up my construction company shortly after getting out and really most of my life was consumed with that. My physical fitness, the endurance work kind of went, went to the side and everything went into this business, running this business, scaling this business. And eventually I found my way back into the world of physical fitness, especially when uh, my mental health was declining. I really went through this dark period of my life and uh, came out on the other side with a newfound appreciation for personal development, personal growth, and my physical fitness. All that to say, I found myself back into this world of endurance events. And this second time around was something just much different. I really began to understand the deeper process that was going on within me going into these endurance events. So I signed up for another marathon. I did the Atlantic City Marathon and I began to do more 5Ks, more 10Ks. And I, more importantly than just the physical aspect, uh, I was now involved in the mental aspect. 
the mindset portion, the, the, the who I was becoming in this process, because running the events is one thing, but it's more than just the event day. There's so much more that goes into it than just showing up on race day and just running 16 miles, 13 miles, 26, whatever that mileage was. There were, it was so much more than just showing up on that day because it was months. It was months and months and months of work, of putting in the miles, of tracking nutrition, of showing up on days where you didn't feel like it, of prioritizing rest and recuperation, of saying no to things that maybe you wanted to do but weren't fully aligned with the goal at hand. There were so many things that it was building within me that I was beginning to see more and more the more I was aware of who I was and who I wanted to be. You see, earlier in life, especially in my mid to early 20s, I really didn't put much mind in who I was, how I wanted to show up, my values, my core values. I, you know, I showed up and, you know, I I considered myself a good person, but I didn't have standards. I really didn't understand standards for myself, for my mind, for my future, and what that meant. That only came about later on, as I mentioned before, after this dark period in my life where everything seemed to fall apart. But it was really that breakdown was the breakthrough for me. It gave me a chance to really reflect and say, who are you? What impact do you want to make in the world? Who do you want to be? What are your values? What's your mission? What are you here to do? When those questions started to formulate for me, some really big answers began to arise. And then I coupled that with this world of endurance events, with seeking challenge, with seeking discomfort. And these shifts began to happen in massive, massive ways. So again, it it began to be about something much more than just saying, oh, well, I just did a marathon, right? It was about falling in love with this process. I was becoming someone so much different. And as I mentioned, the military started that process, this, this new process of, you know, discipline and devotion and having excellence in all that you do and paying attention to the little things and making your bed. Those things were opened up and opened my eyes in the military, but I I didn't have the mindset to fully grasp what was being given to me then. Yes, I was in this environment and I excelled in the military. I did great in my four year career, got promoted and and, and it it was a good career for four years, but I still didn't fully comprehend the lessons that were being given to me. And it wasn't until later on, until I matured a little bit more, until life kicked me a little bit, that I was able to really open my eyes and understand this process of actualizing this potential within me and truly actualizing who I'm meant to be, the mission I have on this earth. And this is all really being cultivated and amplified through these physical fitness events. So running was my doorway in. Running was my doorway into this new level of fitness, this new level of devotion and discipline and showing up despite how I felt. There was all of these things that I was cultivating and I was finding out that throughout this process, the things that I was accomplishing and working with in my physical fitness was now then bleeding into other areas of my life. This excellence in physical fitness led into business and the way I show up and work, whether I was working for someone else, working for myself, building my business, it bled into my relationships, how I was able to show up, take accountability, uh, maintain consistency, stay true to my word. I began to understand that all areas of life blend in with one another and what you do in one area will affect another area. And I was building this resilience. I was building this, this capacity to lean into discomfort, to lean into these things that so little people want to do. Joining the military is one of them. Running marathons is another one of them. The cold plunges, the, just all of these uncomfortable actions. I began to understand it was shaping me. It was transforming me from the inside. My energy was different. People began to notice that I was showing up differently. I was no longer having bouts of depression on the couch. Rather, I was inspired and motivated to wake up in the morning when before there were times where I didn't even want to go to bed because I didn't want to wake up to the reality that was my life. That was where I was at one point in my life. 
at one point, I didn't want to face my life so much that I didn't want to go to bed. I couldn't go to bed. I would fall asleep 3, 4 a.m. And then have to wake up 7, 8, 9 for my business, just tired as could be and depressed, upset, not looking forward to the day. And really, a lot of this was this untapped potential. I wasn't caring for myself. I wasn't paying attention to the clues. I wasn't paying attention to the versions of me that were inside trying to break loose. But now I listen. Now I understand. Now I see the purpose in my life. I've defined the purpose of my life. Because I really believe that life inherently doesn't have any purpose. But it's on each and every individual to define what that purpose is. So everything in the world is meaningless. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have meaning, but it's, it has no inherent meaning. We, the human being, are the meaning makers. So the events that happen to you, the purpose and meaning of your life it is on us. It's not given to us. It's on us to tap into that, to, to make, to create, to embody that meaning and then step into it. And I began to understand this journey of actualizing my full potential and then using that process to inspire, uplift, and motivate other people. This began to unfold as my mission, as my purpose. And as I began to truly understand this, then the devotion, the discipline, the ideas, all of this came through as a natural byproduct. Whereas before I tried to lift weights, I tried to do these physical fitness things. I used to diet because I wanted to look better because I really didn't love myself. And like I said, I was pretty much overweight my whole life. I never felt like I fit in. I never fully accepted myself for who I was. So I was always looking for external validation. I was always doing things for the external reasons, not the intrinsic, not the internal reasons, not because I wanted to actualize the potential within. I just wanted to be loved by others. And ultimately, I, want, I seek to love myself, which I didn't do for a long time. And I found that could never come from the outside. No matter how much external validation, no matter how many external things would come in, until I learned how to have that internal love for myself, it was never enough. And that, that pit of despair, those days on the couch depressed, those were not going to solve themselves until I stepped up to the plate. I was the one to bring the love to myself. And that was the journey I had to find. And eventually I found that. And again, physical fitness and specifically endurance events were one of the keys to me unlocking this. Now there was a lot more, a lot more mindset work, a lot of Tony Robbins events, a lot of reading, a lot of facing myself and my shadows. There was a lot that went on into this process. But truly, the physical things that I began to take on, that I began to really embody, these were the things that unlocked these doors in a massive way. And this is why I just, I continue to push and excel. I, I, have, I am a student of life. As I mentioned, I really feel like my purpose and the purpose of humanity is to continue to actualize the full potential that lies within. And here's the kicker. Our potential is infinite. You know, you see a guy running a marathon, you're like, wow, that's crazy. A person can run 26 miles. And then you see another person running 50 miles. And then you see another person running 100 miles. And then you see another person doing 50, 50 events in 50 days of 100 miles. So for every bit of craziness and, and uh, level that you see, there's another level being pushed by humanity, being pushed by people. And this isn't to say this is a comparison game. This isn't about who is better, who is best, who has more potential. The whole point that I'm trying to drive home here is that the growth is exponential. The growth is infinite. We can continue to explore and expand. You know, I'm always chasing this more optimized, higher performing version of myself. And before it was in a very negative and unbalanced way, it was from a place of not self love, from a place of self hate, I would even say. But now it's been flipped. Now it's from a place of self love. I, I love where I'm at. I'm excited of all that I've accomplished. And also I want to continue to push that envelope of what I can accomplish. And through that, 
I want to inspire humanity. I want to inspire others. I want my actions to be a doorway to open people's minds for what's possible for them. Because that's what happened to me. I began to read books. I began to open my awareness. I began to open my eyes and began to see these people that had such challenging and struggle lives began to, they had the biggest impacts. They began to change their lives. They were changing the lives of others. Well, if they could do it, I could do it. That was the feeling I got. And I began to read more and more and more and surround myself by these communities of people, of people achieving things that I didn't know were possible. And then all of a sudden I began to realize, wow, they're human like me and you. We're all human. We all have this potential within, no matter where we come from, no matter what we've been through, our financial status, we all have this potential to keep pushing. But we must choose. We must choose the challenging route. If we seek an easy life, life will be harder. But if we seek challenge, life becomes easier. Why? It's not because easier things happen. It's because we become more equipped. We become more resilient to face the things that life throws at us. So when we choose that challenge, we're choosing to build a resilience within. And this is why, this is why I've fallen in love with the endurance world. Because as much as I push, I still have people in front of me, inspiring me. And I know that my actions and the things that I'm able to share are inspiring people on their journey as well. And again, it's not behind or forward. Everyone's just where they're at on their journey. And when we tow that line, whether it's a marathon, a 5K, an Ironman, we're just all side by side in our journey. And there's no feeling like it. There's no feeling like race day. When I walk up to that line and there's people from all walks of life next to me, all journeys, people that have, have battled or are battling cancer, people that are missing limbs, people that are doing it for loved ones that they've lost and for charities, People that are, you know, can't run, but they're on a bike just using their hands. People that are pushing strollers. People that are blind with another person running with them so that they can run the event. I mean, all walks of life towing up in an even playing field for one reason, to find out what they're capable of. That excites me so much. And I am addicted to finding out what I'm capable of. And what's crazy is the more that I find what I'm capable of, and the more that I'm surprised of what I'm capable of, there's another level that opens. It's this infinite staircase where this mountain gets climbed and we climb and climb and climb. And we're like, whoa, this is a whole new level of embodiment of what you're capable of. And then all of a sudden this new level opens up and then that becomes a new baseline. And it's this infinite journey, this infinite journey of growth and evolution that in my eyes will never stop in my life. And again, from the outside, this can be confusing. This can look like a rat race. And I remember before I really got into this world, when I was first getting into this, you know, it can look like workaholic syndrome, right? Or it could look like dissatisfaction. Oh, well, they're just not happy where they're at. And they just always need to be working and working and working, which does happen, but again, it's the energy of where it's coming from. Are you in this process out of a, a place of self-hate and not really loving where you are? So in that process, there's this next level that you want to achieve for validation, or is it from this place of loving yourself so much and wanting to continue to excel and embody the potential that you were put on this earth to embody? It's two way different energies. I call it joyful dissatisfaction or even grateful dissatisfaction. It's a state that I find myself in and I appreciate it. I'm joyful. I'm grateful. I am proud of all that I've accomplished and where I'm at. And also there's a dissatisfaction knowing that there's more to be done. And maybe dissatisfaction is not the right word, but it's this voice inside me that's saying, hey, we've done a lot, but there's still a lot more to go. There's a lot more potential inside of you that's ready to be actualized. You have been put on this planet to continue to grow and evolve mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, in all these ways. And there's, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. 
You know, there, nothing is just stagnant. Nothing is still in the universe. Everything is moving. The planets are moving. The galaxies are moving. Everything is in a constant state of flux and flow and change. So if, if we step off and we're not continuing to embody, we're not continuing to expand and give back and, and develop that purpose and that drive and that vision, then we go in the other direction. And again, this isn't from an imbalanced state. I know there'll be some people that'll look at this and say, well, you know, you're just always driving, you're always pushing, and you know, you're not taking the time to just be. But I feel like this is, this is the ultimate essence of being. It's the ultimate essence of connecting to what the divine or God or whatever you call it has placed inside every single one of us. We've been put on here for a mission. I see this life as a school. It's a school. We're here to learn, we're here to grow, we're here to embody. So yes, enjoy the process, enjoy the moment. Be appreciative of where you are, grateful of where you are, happy where you are, 100%. But that doesn't mean that you can't still be chasing and moving forward with the version of you that you're moving into. I guess I don't love the term chasing, but it is, we're, we're in a constant movement towards just a more aligned, higher performing, more highly optimized version of ourselves. And I don't believe there's a finish line on that. There's no finish line on life. And I love the process. I absolutely love it. So that's why I'm doing the Ironman this year. I did the half Ironman last year. It went great. And I said afterwards, I was like, wow, that was a lot of training. I can't imagine doing a full. And then this year I was like, I'm ready for it. There was a part of me that's like, let's, let's push that next envelope. Let's see what we're capable of. And I'm ready for that this year. And then I'm going to get done with this. And I don't know what the next goal is going to be. But there's going to be another one set forth. Because I've experienced it before where we, I reached this massive goal. And then, you know, there's this big rush leading up to this goal. Then you experience it. You get the goal. And then that's it. This big thing is out of your life. And then it's almost like this area of like, losing purpose, right? Like I've had it where like this, I was going towards this big thing and trained towards this big thing. And then it just happens and it's gone. And it's like, well, what do I do now? Right? So I found that like, I need to consistently have these things in mind, have these plans in place, have these goals and these visions in place. So when I attain that big goal, great. What's the next process we're moving into? And that's why I have a bunch of different ways in which I set up my goals. It's not just about one outcome goal, but there's more goals tied in, which I'll get into on another podcast episode. So with that, this is really the big reason why, why I got into endurance sports, why I'm doing the Ironman in Chattanooga this year and the, the immense impact that it's had on my life. Like I said, I never really considered myself much of an athlete. It was something that had to be cultivated. I had to find within myself. I had to understand and first and foremost, believe was possible for myself. That started in the military. The seeds were planted. I began to see and understand a different possibility, a different version of who I could be in life. And then after the military, I began to fully actualize that after a little bit of a breakdown in my life, which ended up being the breakthrough. So just know your potential is infinite. Whatever you want to accomplish physically, mentally, in your career, how you want to give back to the world, the mission you have in life, the purpose, there's no limiter. There is none. So the more that you continue to move forward mindfully, the more that you continue to build and push yourself and seek that discomfort, the more you're just going to continue to actualize that potential that exists inside of you. So I hope you found this beneficial. I'm excited to share more and I'm excited to join you in the next episode where I'll talk about those goals. All right. Thanks for joining me today and talk soon.